part of the preparation included the erection of a sturdy scaffolding or jacking frame around the chamber to raise it. Jack strategically placed around the chamber elevated it the few inches required. Five sets of reinforced steel I beams were then slid into place beneath the 750 ton chamber. Mounted on the beams were frames of steel rollers, one of the most primitive but effective methods of transporting huge, unwieldy objects. Like the ancient Egyptian pyramid builders moving their ponderous stones, but with winches instead of slaves, this metal colossus was tugged across the short distance to the waiting barge. Moving literally at a snail's pace for over four days, the chamber crept toward the water one careful inch at a time. The chamber was firmly supported by steel girders welded in place to provide security and stability on the trip. The barge was ballasted with water to compensate for the weight of the cargo. The tugboat's arrival signaled the beginning of the journey. During the evening hours, final preparations were completed. Lines cast off, and the barge began its trip to Annapolis. Almost three and a half million dollars worth of hopes, plans, and hardware at the end of a three-inch hauser. The Chesapeake Bay Bridge was a reminder that the trip was almost over. Across the Severn River from the Naval Academy at Annapolis is the Naval Ship Research and Development Laboratory. Journey's end for the deep submergence test chamber. It was here at innumerable shirt sleeve conferences that the basic concepts of the chamber were first put down on paper. And it is also here, in a building right on the water's edge, that the chamber would come to rest. In this area near the laboratory dock, the water was too shallow to permit the tug to maneuver. The barge, therefore, had to be literally manhandled the last few feet into its berth. A 1 16th of an inch plan tolerance in the level between the barge and the dock made the exchange of water ballast a delicate and precise operation. With the barge secured to the unloading dock, the same meticulous operations are repeated to move the chamber ashore.
by careful inch, the huge chamber moves slowly to its final resting site. If this precisely planned movement had in some perverse way failed and the chamber slid into the Severn River, salvagers would have faced a major disaster. No crane in existence today could have raised the chamber. Next came the 100-ton closure device. Working into the night, the unloading crew moved it flawlessly off the barge into position near the chamber. The chamber was complete with the installation of monitoring controls and data analyzing instruments. The facility was now prepared to test equipments and their components. Deep Star 2000, Westinghouse Electric Corporation's Ocean Research Submersible, posed the first major challenge to the facility's capabilities. Before undertaking a diving assignment on the Atlantic Continental Shelf, Westinghouse requested that its small submersible undergo testing in the ocean pressure chamber to assure the safety of its three-member crew. For the first time in the history of deep ocean research, three men climbed into a small submersible prepared to spend nearly a full working day sealed inside the largest pressure chamber in the world. The 100-ton closure device moves ponderously into lock position. The eight two-ton steel wedges are fitted snugly into the collar groove with a 32nd of an inch clearance. As seawater is pumped into the seal chamber under great pressure, the quiet drama of this unusual test begins. Closed circuit television, its camera placed within the chamber, gives visual documentation to experiments conducted in a simulated deep ocean environment. Scientists and engineers were elated at the conclusion of the test when the three men emerged from Deep Star. It was evident that a significant milestone had been reached in ocean engineering research. This deep sea pressure chamber with a testing capability to a depth of more than five miles and to a pressure of 12,000 pounds per square inch is available to government agencies and private industry for the testing of deep ocean equipment and components. <laughs>